So the sinus infection really is when the germs get trapped in the sinuses and create this pus that can cause headaches, pressure in the sinuses. But just because your nose is congested and you have a runny nose, um, it doesn't mean uh, that you have a sinus infection. The other thing is that not everybody that has a sinus infection really needs to have be treated with antibiotics. And it's because most of the time uh, the infection will resolve on its own. Eventually the, the swelling goes down, the sinus drains, and the body recovers. And this is really the best situation to have. If we're not going to use antibiotics because we want our body to, to heal on its own and we want, don't want to create antibiotic resistance, we do want to treat the symptoms of the sinus infection so that we can get better. So if you take medications that can help reduce the swelling in the nose, then the sinuses are more likely to drain and the infection is more likely to resolve. There's basically two different ways of, of addressing that inflammation. One is to take some decongestants by mouth, and that's like Sudafed. You can also use topical nose sprays, uh, Afrin, uh, neosinephrine, things like that. There's a warning when you use the nasal congestion sprays is that there is a possibility that the nose could get addicted to it. But on the other hand, it's extremely effective and helpful in an acute setting. So if somebody has got a bad cold, uh, it can be just amazingly helpful to use a topical nasal spray. Most of the time we recommend that you don't start antibiotics right away, but if you have an infection that goes on for you know, two to three weeks, that's generally the time when we would recommend antibiotics. And the longer you've had the infection, the longer you need to take the antibiotics to, to settle it down. A baby, when it's first born, really doesn't have much in the way of sinuses. So for that first year or so of life, if they've got pus coming from their nose, it's, it's not really a sinus infection because they only have very rudimentary areas of sinuses. Uh, but as they grow, these air cells uh, that are sinuses get bigger and bigger so that by the time they get to be you know, 10, 12 years old, then they have normal sinuses. Uh, but that doesn't mean that a, a baby can't have a purulent infection and pus coming from the nose because um, the adenoids are, in, are infected. The adenoids are a, a pad of tissue that's, that's like the tonsils and it sits on the back wall of the throat behind the nose. So the adenoids can cause us a problem, number one, in the blocking the breathing, and number two, they can increase the chances of having sinus infections. Not only because uh, they're a, a place for the germs to collect, but they impede that normal drainage. And this is why in children that have lots of sinus infections, we usually recommend an adenoidectomy. If we can't control it with, it, with antibiotics or by treating underlying allergies, and that, we recommend an adenoidectomy. The other thing is I mentioned asthma. A child who has asthma is uh, probably pretty likely to um, have inflammatory problems in their nose also. And in these children, we like to treat them with uh, long-term uh, nasal steroids. Uh, that's a steroid spray that you would spray in the nose. You can use steroids sprayed into the nose really for quite a long period of time without any real problems. Endoscopic sinus surgery was um, introduced in the, probably in the early 80s and it's a, a way of looking inside the nose with telescopes and it's proven to be really effective for adults in terms of restoring the normal drainage. But the problem is that the instruments, even though they're very small, they're still too large for children. So we're, we're always a little less uh, enthusiastic about doing sinus surgery in children. However, there is an advance technically recently that's made it a lot easier to try and restore the drainage of the sinuses in children. And it has to do with using balloon catheters. And it can really dramatically open up the, uh, the opening. So what we do now in order to uh, really address some of the, the sinus infections in children before we proceed to any other type of surgery is that we use one of these balloons and you just thread it in um, under uh, looking through a, a little telescope and then you blow up the balloon and it does uh, stretch the opening. The other thing that's very nice about it, it, it doesn't cause any tears or injuries to the lining of that, it stretches things open so there's very little in the way of scar tissue. Um, because scar tissue can block up the sinuses and cause problems that way.